Hi there. Welcome to another episode of the Grand Meadows Fireside video series. So today we're going to kind of do the wrap up on digestion because just like the joint supplements, there's literally dozens of products out there and everybody's got the best product. So, you know, how do you differentiate? What, what do you need to focus on? And, and, and basically what we've got at the moment, as I see it, is, you know, you have products that are addressing coating the stomach. Uh, or, 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 you know, re reducing the risk of acid accumulation in the stomach in, in various forms. And then you have uh, the, 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 the predominance uh, of, of products which are focused on enhancing bacterial digestion in the large intestine, largely with probiotics. So, here are my thoughts. Um, I think on the stomach Aspects, <clears throat> you know, we all know of the risks, the, the statistics, particularly when it comes to thoroughbreds, racing thoroughbreds on, on uh, stomach uh, problems. And whilst there is no substitute for, uh, you know, using something like a gastro guard, which unfortunately is incredibly expensive, uh, you know, to, to actually directly address the problem of ulcers in the stomach, um, you know, the, the, the way to help support the horse's ability to reduce the risk of those um, with nutritional supplements of one kind or another, you know, definitely has a, a place to play. But, you know, uh, I, I strongly uh, uh, feel that, that, you know, when, when companies are out there representing that a supplement is for ulcers, that that's, you know, that's just uh, a stretching uh, too far. Uh, it, you know, it's just not realistic. Um, the one thing that I've found kind of interesting is, uh, and, and I touched on this a little bit when we talked about the small intestine, is you know everybody uh, seems to have just ignored that. that I, uh, there's one company that also has put some enzymes in their product, um, <clears throat> which is what we do uh, with our product, because you know the small intestine is just such a, an important and integral part of the digestive process, and yet and it really you know just has not been. Uh, utilized uh, you know in terms of the formulation of these these products um, now getting into the large intestine so probiotics have been around forever all you got to do is walk into a supermarket there's a zillion products with probiotics in them and um, whilst I definitely believe probiotics you know have a benefit um, there's to me two really significant obstacles or issues associated with their use so firstly is the shelf life or stability of the product. For probiotics to work, those so many billion CFUs that you see on the label of a product, whether it's in a bagged feed or whether it's in a, a digestion specific supplement, um, you know, are, are, are based on what you're supposed to be getting, right, when you feed the product. But, you know, there's, I've asked literally over a dozen yeast manufacturers over the years, so can you tell me, how many of these probiotics are actually going to be alive by the time they get to the hindgut? I haven't had a single manufacturer be able to tell me, oh, well, there'll be so many. Uh, and that's always, to me, the, the big failing with probiotics from the shelf stability standpoint, because these are live yeast cells. In fact, in the human marketplace, you know, they're all sold largely refrigerated. Um, and even then, there's a lot of question marks about how many of them uh, 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 die, you know, there's, there's this massive attrition going on. Uh, and then obviously we're looking at, at, at horse products, which are normally sitting on a, 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 a tack shop shelf, and, and it may be weeks uh, after their manufacturer. So, you know, this whole idea of what's actually in the product ending up in the hindgut, I think, again, this is not sort of a universal denigration of probiotics, but for me, prebiotics make a lot more sense and, and really the difference we're talking about here is prebiotics are fermented yeast uh, and, and instead of this idea of adding billions of new bugs uh, to the beneficial bacteria in the hindgut we're talking about providing nutrition to the existing bacterial population and thereby stimulating their reproduction and their health etc etc the second part that i think is also kind of an obstacle as again, my opinion, is that <clears throat> at any given time, there's literally thousands of different beneficial bacteria in the hindgut, okay? And some of them live for a few hours, some of them live for a few days. There's this 
constant turnover. Obviously, you know, when we move a horse, as I talked about previously, from one location to another, particularly from another country to another, uh, you know, we see this massive drop uh, in the population and horses lose condition. Um, and this can also occur, obviously, with antibiotics, you know, which, which have a big effect on, on the beneficial bacteria. If we see a drop in the pH, we can see a, a massive uh, drop off in, in, in the population. Um, but uh, going back to this whole point of these thousands of ingredients, uh, thousands of different beneficial bacteria. So if you look at the average probiotic product, let's say they've got four or five different yeast strains in the product. So how do you know that those are the yeast strains that your horse needs when there's literally thousands of different yeast strains at any given time, uh, you know, during, during this constant uh, uh, renewal process? So, you know, the other reason I like the prebiotics is because of the idea of them providing nutrition to the population at large, uh, and it just seems to make a lot more sense. Now, I hope you've noticed so far that I really haven't talked much about Grand Meadows specifically as far as our products are concerned. Um, but in this particular instance, I would like to talk about our product Grand Digest because I truly believe this is the only product on the market that does address the entire digestive system. Because when I formulated this product, in seeing what I felt was the incompleteness of, of, of the products that were out in the marketplace, you know, Everything is connected in the digestive system. And if one part of it isn't working, then it's probably going to have an impact on the other parts. And I truly believe the Grand Digest is, is, is the product that more than any other on the market, I think, represents uh, 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 that, that really comprehensive approach to the entire digestive system. Now, we use this pretty amazing prebiotic in our product, which does a ton of other things beyond just the whole idea of enhancing bacterial digestion. So we've got actually research on, for example, increased uh, oxygen in the blood. We've got research on uh, reduction in lactic acid recovery time. We've got research on an increase in the density in the surface area of the intestinal bilii, thereby improving uh, and enhancing that digestion of those carbohydrate starches, which is, again, when I've been talking about the small intestine, is, is one of the biggest problems we have with, with grain diets, is, is the horse is trying to digest something that historically they have not evolved to eat. Um, so, you know, we don't use gimmicks, we don't offer you colic insurance, as, you know, a couple of companies are, are, are doing right now, it's kind of an interesting approach, it's been very successful, I take my hat off to them because it's worked as a marketing gambit but it's almost like well okay yeah we're doing this uh we're doing this product but in case it doesn't work here um you know we're just focused on making a really good product and uh, i i would encourage you to uh, go online check out the grand digest um have a look uh, and i i think you'll be very impressed uh, if you use it we, we've really had some pretty amazing uh, testimonials but at the end of the day <clears throat> Those are kind of my thoughts uh, in wrapping up the digestion uh, article. Uh, I'm really interested to hear your comments, your questions, uh, because it is a, a, a pretty convoluted topic. Um, but I hope that in the, in the uh, breakdown that we've done uh, from the stomach, the small intestine, the large intestine, and, and this sort of wrap up, uh, that it's perhaps given you a little bit better idea about kind of what to look for, what to be thinking about. Uh, if it's an area of your horse's nutrition that you want to address. So thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time when we're going to be getting into the hoof. Bye.